What's up everybody, David with the Freeze Dry Business Channel. I've got an exciting sequel to my interview that I had with Parker Freeze Dry. This is essentially part two of my visit in Beersford, South Dakota, where Parker Freeze Dry is located. Now they built a brand new 130,000 square foot manufacturing facility. So I got a personal tour of that entire manufacturing plant. You're gonna see all the different machinery that they use to cut the steel that they build the freeze dryers to. You're also gonna understand a little bit more in depth about where Parker freeze dry came from and you're also going to see firsthand one of their more walk-in commercial freeze dryers where i actually show you what the rack looks like and we put it together all that needless to say this is going to be a much more interactive type of video so i hope you stick around now before i cut to the tour if you are not a subscriber yet to this channel i encourage you to join our freeze drying community this channel is specifically designed around freeze drying and starting a freeze drying business also throughout this video if you're really liking the tour that i had with parker freeze dry give this video a thumbs up it really helps with the algorithm and helps this video get to more and more people who might be interested in freeze drying, specifically a commercial freeze dryer. Now let's get to the tour at Parker Freeze Dry. So we're on the production floor here and um, we're gonna go by some of the equipment that goes into making these freeze drying systems. We do a lot of different things here. On the freeze dry side, you know, our sheet laser cuts out the standard shapes for most of the parts that we need. And then we've got our tube laser it takes care of the tube, the tube steel. Both of these machines are uh, pretty efficient. Everything goes from here and then it works its way over into the forming department if that's the next step that's involved. But all of this stuff is what takes place before we get to the actual welding scenario and the fabrication of the equipment itself. Is bread being cut right now? Let's take a look at here. Nope, it's hard steel, a little bit thicker than bread, but they do all their little cutting in here for all the freeze dryers right in here. On this side, we've got our forming machine. Right now, there's nothing happening on it, but you can see a couple pieces just sitting there that it just got done. This system's actually set up to run, uh, run dark if we needed to. We would load it full of pallets of sheets and walk away, and when we come in the next day, all the finished products sitting on the finished pallets that set of tooling it automatically picks the tooling that it needs wow. and the amount of pressure that's needed to bend it into those specific shapes after the apocalypse there's going to be cockroaches and freeze dryers left <laughs> quick short story bob parker was buying vacuum chambers that were designed for cheese they were about this high about this long and he was buying them secondhand on the market and turning them into these very first generation Parker freeze dryers back 20 some years ago. He couldn't find any more of them, but he was able to find out who was building those chambers and that was us. Wow. So he got a hold of us and then we helped him redesign it more specific to his needs instead of secondhand cheese vacuum. Before we were Proform, we specialized in the dairy business and sanitary stainless. Wow. And a lot of it was cheese. Okay. And that's kind of the connection of how we got into this. The current design basically was a collaboration between our engineers and Bob. All right, Matt, so we've seen kind of where the laser, you know, cutting materials are, everything like that, but it makes me kind of wonder how long does it take to manufacture, let's just say the, the summit. Typical scenario, we're gonna be like six to eight weeks for delivery. We'll prefabricate most of the steel in groups of so many whatever makes the most sense for manufacturing at the time with what we can get steel for and what the time that it takes to cut everything. You don't do them one at a time. It just, that's not economical Yeah. when you get at the summit level. So six to eight weeks for a summit. If somebody was gonna order a Parker 10R or a Parker 10 or one of our larger ones, it's probably six to eight months is, is usually typical. There's, a, there's enough tied up in the inventory and the components and everything that it's not something we just stock. No. We will get started ahead of time so that we've got a head start on that lead time. Yeah. Like for instance, I've got a Parker 2 that's ready to go right now. I've got a Parker 10 that is well into that six to eight month time window. Yeah. But we just, you know, we had the resources available so we built ahead a little bit. Yeah. But it's pretty typical that you'll see six to eight months for a lead time. Yeah, and like we're in this manufacturing facility and there's massive freeze dryers being made right now. Yes. And so, Someone's buying these. Someone <laughs> is investing a lot, six to eight months out, to expand and meet the demands of their product. Right. That's pretty cool. 
yeah, it's it's a really neat process to be a part of. It's a it's a really long process overall for some of the large facilities and the the whole facility build outs where they're putting 15 of these things in one place. A lot of this stuff is happening so long before we've even started cutting the steel because of everything that needs to fall in place for it to all go. But when it comes time to place your order and to take delivery, you usually want to plan on six to eight months. And then you've got, you know, once it gets to your facility after that, you've probably got two or three work of two or three weeks of install work by your local HVAC and by your local electrician. And then at that point, then we'll come down and commission it after that. What's like the most of these free stars you've seen at your customers' facilities? Um, I have been to one that has a set of 15 of our Parker 10R systems. And um, it's a it's a really impressive facility. Wow! They've got it's a well-oiled machine. <laughs> and a Parker tank can do how much? Twenty-five hundred pounds per batch per day. So you can think about them. think about how much either pet food, milk, uh, you know, food products. That's just a lot of product meeting the demands. I'll get you back to the tour in 30 seconds, but after watching this first initial part, you can show your support by doing two things. Number one is hit the like button on this video if you're liking the tour so far. It really helps the video get out to more and more people who are searching for freeze drying here on YouTube. Number two is I've activated memberships to this channel. If you wanna help support financially my efforts of getting more information and education about the freeze drying industry back to you for free, then you can support this channel by becoming a freeze drying supporter member Member and paying a small monthly fee so that this money goes directly to me visiting and exposing more of the freeze drying industry. So if you haven't done so already, hit the thumbs up on this video or you can check out memberships to this channel by using the video description below. I'll put a link in there or you can go to the channel about page. Now let's get back to the tour. The whole machine comes in here and they hit it with these nozzles and this is the finish that gets applied to it. And what does the finish do for the machine? It makes uh, it easier to clean and it's food safe. Here, yeah, the whole oh, system the gets that same finish, that bead blast. So you can see how nice those ones look in the time to grind and polish whatever, whatever they needed to. Make it nice and uniform, consistent. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, like so this is the inside of our Summit system. Um, we've got our condenser plate there for the ice collection. We've got thermocouples that uh, monitor your product temperatures. And then we've got a, a thermocouple that monitors the amount of heat being applied. So when you're res setting up your recipes and your profiles, you know, this is what you're controlling is this temp. It's telling you, you've set your point to 50 degrees. This is what's gonna tell the machine when it got to 50 degrees. These ones will monitor the product itself, which just gives you an idea what's happening inside the chamber. Basically, it's a turnkey system that uh, 240 volt 60 amp service so when you get it it shows up in a crate and um, you know you get your rigging crew your forklift or whatever to get it back on the get it down on the ground get it into position plug it in you've got a checklist when you receive it of things you need to just tighten we do testing runs for our customers we have that as an option if somebody's interested in it they just give us a call we talk about what they're doing we make sure it's a good fit we go through some some ideas and, and just learn a little bit more and we can run a batch in our Summit system for you. Basically, we'll take your product in, we'll do a test run and provide you with the results and then you can kind of decide, okay, did that, is that scale? Does that do what I want it to do? And the recipes and stuff that you generate in a system like this also work in our big machines. Yeah. So if you're on a growth plan and you've got 15 machines, 20 machines, and you want that industrial reliability, you get into something like this, dial in your processes, build out your book of business, build out your, 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 your portfolio, and then when you're ready to go into the 500 pound or the 1500 pound system, you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Yeah. You're not learning a whole new language. You just go from here to there. You're just adding more product then at that point. Let's push this into the freeze dryer. What type of freeze dryer is this? So we're going into a Parker 2 system. And you usually want two people pushing it in for safety reasons. Once we get up to the front here. Okay, so we turn it. it turn turns. it sideways. We'll make sure to take our thermal couples and get them into the products inside the cart here so that we can monitor what's going on. That's the power for the individual rack. Yep. Yep. yep, so that takes care of applying all the heat to the product. 
the way our system is designed is 42 trays. There's conductive heat coming from underneath and radiant heat coming from the top for each tray for a nice, good, consistent result across all 42 trays. And I'm six foot, so this whole chamber is really easy to kind of manage, check your product, um, you know, get into your actual freeze dryer, which is, you know, unique for a lot of people who have home freeze dryers, you know, you're having to reach with your hands, you can do a lot of cleaning. So a full load in here is going to be 500 pounds, got two of the carts that fit in there. If we were going to be operating, we would seal everything up, come over to the HMI panel, call up our recipe that we used previously, hit the start button, and then walk away. Hopefully come back 16, 18 hours later to a completed run. Once you've been trained on how to operate the system and how to program your recipes, you're also during your installation, during our commissioning when we visit your facility, we'll be going through how to read all the different KPIs and all the different indicators. These systems have remote access in them as well, so you don't have to sit right in front of it for 18 hours. You get your facility set up, you've got it hooked up to the ethernet, when you go home, you can log into it and watch that process. If you're trying a new recipe, you don't have to stand right next to it. You can control it in real time and monitor it in real time. So if you think, oh, I'm getting too hot too fast, you can adjust, you can adjust that. If you're not getting hot enough, you can adjust that. Program it accordingly. But once you have the recipe, it's, this machine is equipped to do it the same way Correct. every time. It might have some variabilities. Talk a lot about variabilities. Yeah, the here. biggest variable that we see is, is going to be on the human element of the loading and the unloading. If you're not setting up consistent loads across the trays between the two different carts, the six carts, the ten carts, you're going to see different results. You get your recipe dialed in so that you're always processing the same amount every time similar size portions, everything all the same yeah. every time, you're gonna get consistent results on the way out. I think about like a coffee shop, you know, you're like some people who are doing those pour over coffees or those, you know, you think they're like, it's over the top coffee making is what I call it. Yeah. But they truly are, they're measuring out the amount of coffee beans, the amount of espresso, mm -hmm. all that type of thing to make that type of drink. Right. But because they're measuring out, they get the same type of coffee to the same customer yeah. every time. Yep. Consistency is the key and it's garbage in, garbage out. You make one change, it could throw the whole thing off. So it's very important that you understand your processes, especially pre-process before you hit that start button. The cart in here, Matt, um, each individual tray has, talk about the heating system compared to like a, a thermal heat that we're used to in a home freeze dryer where it's kind of cut, trying to cover all the bases. How right. are you different? So our system is designed to provide heat to each and every shelf. And it does that via a different heater for each and every shelf. So in our standard cart design, there's 42 heaters in that system. And each one of them is running the same profile. Okay. Now we do have another option added that in this particular instance, we have an option available when you're doing your contract that you can program these carts to do different things. So if you've got product A that has a very specific recipe, you put that in cart one and you run product A's profile. And in cart two, you've got product B's profile and they can run different heating profiles in the same chamber. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it really comes in handy if you're dealing with multiple SKUs. Um, when you get to the size of the large machines where you're doing 2,500 pounds of product, you've got nine carts of your, your old reliable SKU that you're selling you can have one cart of the new product that you're trying out so that you don't have to check a whole batch just for one item. That's pretty slick. So yeah. there's multiple uses for the freeze dryer. Correct, correct. So I've got some customers currently that have our 10 cart systems with individual cart control and I've seen them running three of A and seven of B or whatever. As yeah. long as they have no concerns about cross-contamination between them being in the same chamber, um, that you're able to really get flexible with your production abilities. And we've been talking to Parker Freeze Dry and Matt Gronke. You know, as you can see, this is a fascinating world and it's just getting started. This channel right here is all about freeze drying, freeze drying as a business. If you're an entrepreneur and you're just looking at starting out, this is, this is later down the road, but it's something that you can aspire to get to because if you've got a unique recipe, if you're a chef, if you're someone who understands the pet food market, Maybe you're looking at supplements to powderize different types of organic uh, produce and combine it into a very high nutrient, all natural vitamin, that type of thing. 
This is all that Parker Freeze Dry has to offer, as well as commercial freeze drying. Thanks a lot for giving me this tour, you know, introducing the world of Parker Freeze Dry, and uh, we're excited to kind of learn more and see what your growth has to offer for your company. Yeah, thanks for coming up today, David. Um, it's been a pleasure showing you around. If any of your viewers have any questions, feel free to reach out. There's numerous ways to reach us. You can see them all on our website, www.parkerfreezedry.com. Thanks a lot.